Hi, welcome to Caring Band-Aid. Today's discussion, we're going to be talking about renal failure, and I'm going to categorize it into two categories, acute versus chronic. Make it kind of simple for you. Um, you may want to repeat watching this video. However, let's get started. So in the center is a picture of your kidneys. Um, it looks like two little beans are right in the center. Your two little kidneys. Okay, and then in red is your arterial blood flow. So this is what comes in. You get about 25% of this go of this blood flow, arterial blood flow, goes to the kidneys. So I'm just going to write arterial. And then right next to it, this is your venous blood flow. Okay, right below it are your ureters, very important. All right, ureter. And then right below it is your lovely bladder. Isn't the human body just amazing? Okay. So right on top, I'm going to write acute renal failure, RF. In nursing, you tend to just abbreviate a lot of stuff, makes it a lot easier. And then right next to it, you have your chronic renal failure. Okay. Like I've said in my previous videos, I like to think simple. And then from there, if you're able to understand the basics, then you're able to expand. So with acute renal failure, it's sudden, okay? Just sudden. It happens, and if it's treated promptly, so you treat it promptly, it's reversible, meaning gets better, okay? But you got to treat it, you got to treat the underlying cause. Versus chronic, it's permanent damage. This is something that's kind of happened over a number of years. And this is irreversible, unfortunately. And this usually requires dialysis for survival, which we'll kind of discuss at the end. Okay, so acute renal failure is a decrease. So there's three categories, okay? So I'm gonna write one, you got your pre-renal. Number two, you got your intra-renal. And number three, you got your post renal. Okay. So pre renal is kind of like before. So it's kind of like your warning. So pre is before. It's kind of like a warning. So pre renal could be the easiest way to explain it is. Um, Diminished blood flow. So if you have a diminished blood flow, so decrease in blood flow could be another word for it is hypovolemia. So you're not getting that 25% required cardiac output into your kidney. So you see your arterial blood flow. There's just something is happening above that isn't allowing the perfusion within your kidneys that's causing an insult. So we got to treat the underlying cause. So that's pre-renal. And usually, so with intra-renal, you have damage. So within your kidneys, I'm going to kind of just draw a little segment right here and pull it out. So within your kidneys, you have epithelial cells. And these little epithelial cells, I'm going to write epithelial right here. live off of oxygen. 
So guess what? If you're not getting oxygen, these cells are going to die, also known as uh, necrosis. So if it becomes necrosis, it can lead to ischemic, tubular necrosis, which is lack of oxygen. Okay? So an example can also be meds. So that's one example. So intrarenal is when things are happening from within. So like I said, the epithelial cells, the death of the epithelial cells long-term can relate to ischemic tubular necrosis. Another reason can be medicine-induced, so your meds. Um, some meds that can cause it are, um, one of them is uh, anti-rejection medicine. It's called cyclosporine. So I'm going to write cyclosporine right here. It's your anti-rejection medicine. So if you have a patient um, and they're on an anti-rejection medicine, uh, you want to be very mindful that, um, you know, this could potentially cause an acute renal failure. So um, it's just not the doctor's responsibility. It's a team approach. You definitely want to keep that in mind um, when you're administering this medicine. Um, some other medications could be like epinephrine, um, high dose dopamine, like in a, in a critical care setting. misspell that but you know what I mean dopamine okay so that would be intrarenal within the kidney so that's the damage that can be occurring post renal is when it can have um, you can have an obstruction of your urine flow from the kidneys so maybe your so there's an obstruction something's going on within obstruction of your ureters or maybe within your bladder there's a tumor or your urethra um, some males can have BPH benign prosthetic hyperplasia which causes obstruction of the urine and that could be another sudden insult so like I said um, treatment of choice is you gotta just treat the underlying cause. Okay. And then you have your chronic renal failure. So that is permanent damage to kidneys that is irreversible. So with chronic renal failure, um, it's irreversible damage of the kidneys with loss of renal cells and worsening um, um, glomerular filtration. So you're, I'm going to bring you to another page right now. And on this page, you have your glomerular filtration rate. And... Right below it, it says number of functioning nephrons. I drew this out to depict. So the ones in red are your functioning cells. Okay. And the ones in blue are your um, nephrons that have um, necrosed. So they're not functioning. So the ones in blue are not functioning so the ones in red had to kind of pick up the slack to help support the kidney in waste so if you have a 50 percent diminished reserve within your gfr at this point your bu so your serum bun and creatinine so when you get labs from your patient and they're normal you're the patient clinically is not going to have any symptoms of impaired renal failure. So this is why this supports the fact a lot of people have said, well, how can you just live off of one kidney? So sometimes people will donate kidneys. Um, and this 
gives you a reasoning. This helps support the fact how many people can survive off of one functioning kidney. So as nephrons are destroyed and those that are functioning have to pick up the slack to help compensate. So because nephrons filter more solute, which causes more water to be lost in urine, some of the early signs of renal failure is polyuria. So some of these patients can um, start having symptoms with renal failure, so they may depict a symptom as polyuria. So they're just, they're peeing a lot. So I'll put polyuria, okay? So with chronic um, renal failure, your GFR has to be less than 20 to 25% of normal. So less than 20 to 25% normal of your GFR for it to be affected, okay? And with renal failure, some of the symptoms is you can have extracellular fluid. So it will show a symptom as edema. You can also have develop, say you draw an arterial blood gas and your arterial blood, blood gas comes back and you have metabolic acidosis. So your pH will be, will be acidotic, so less than 7.35. And then your bicarb will be less than 22, which results in metabolic acidosis. And then say you're looking at their lab values. They can also have hyperkalemia. So the potassium will be greater than 5.0. Okay. Um, with end-stage renal disease, it's gonna write right here. So end-stage renal disease, your GFR. is less than 5% of normal. And so above here, this is renal disease that I was talking about regarding your GFR. Okay, and so with end-stage renal disease, your GFR is less than 5% of normal. So you're having atrophy within your GFR, fibrosis, within the tubules. Of your glomerulus. And at this point, your treatment of choice is going to be dialysis and or uh, kidney transplant, which is what's going to become essential for survival. There is such an abundant amount of information that I love to share with you, but this is just a piece of it. It's a very important concept, being able to understand and differentiate acute versus chronic. Hope this helped, and please check out my Facebook. Um, be sure to like my YouTube page and um, Instagram at Caring Banding. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.